Hello everybody. I'm thinking back to days when live video used to count down, didn't it? You used to have the numbers up on the screen and it would five, four, three, two, one. And then suddenly there you were in the screen going, oh, I'm on. It doesn't do that anymore, does it? Hello, Anna, nice to see you. And Stuart, hello, nice to see you. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Sharon Hurst and I paint all sorts of things in all sorts of media. Tonight, we're going to have a little go at watercolour. So thank you very much for joining me in the studio. I've um, left the window open this evening because it is so warm in here that I'm wearing my kind of nighty top just because I'm so warm. It isn't really my nighty, stop it. But it means that we might just hear the odd car go past um, and we've, we're very lucky. Would you believe it? We've got some wild peacocks around here. And so you, you could very well land up hearing the old peacocks screaming the way they do. And if it makes us all jump, we're just going to have to say to ourselves, oh, well, it's cool, it's fine. And it'll be an added element to the picture. Whilst we're waiting for people to arrive and to come and join us, just bear with me for a minute. It, it's never ever a good idea to go straight into a live demo because all of the time I'm talking to you, I'm watching people coming online and I need to give people time to be aware that, oh, that woman's on. So I thought what we do, would you like to have a little look at the journaling I've been doing this past week. There's been an initiative, um, it's based in Australia and they have an artist journaling week and it's, it's all around nature, the, the theme is nature. And every single day they give you a subject and there are videos that you can watch and there are tutorials that you can watch during the day and they do worksheets and you can print them off. It's very, very exciting and I've thoroughly enjoyed my week um, working on this. So the first day was flowers and I love my garden, absolutely adore my garden. So I, was, I scooted out in the garden and took some photographs put them on my iPad and my phone so that I could sit here and look at those whilst I worked. So this was the first day. This is the Allium that I had out there. Beautiful, stinky, but rather nice. Allium, it's an onion, onion family. And I have a beautiful clematis. I love my clematis. It's this gorgeous blue. And the plate, they're, they're the size of dinner plates, it's just the hugest flowers ever. They're beautiful. So this was my clematis and then the next day was animals and that incorporated anything and everything that you wanted in the garden and of course or elsewhere and people from all parts of the world were painting different animals and I, I cracked on and we've had a jay visiting our garden this year and um, he's been feeding the family. I'm not quite sure whether we've got two coming and going or just one, but this, this was our Jay. And then, then it was plants and fungi and lichens. And so, you know me, that's right up my street and I couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to do. And it was easy then, wasn't it? You just do a bit of everything. So we went for the shaggy ink caps and a couple I don't even recognise and I don't know what they are and a couple of lichens and of course bear in mind lichens very good because it means that you have clear air, clean air. They won't grow in dirty sooty city air or you know smelly air. They have to have good clean air. And then it was found things. And we, over the years, we've lived here for, oh, 28 years, nearly 29 years. And we've found all sorts in the garden. And these were some of the things that I found in the garden and when I've been walking on the seashore. We're not that far from the sea. But this was the most peculiar object. It's, 
bigger than that, it's probably twice the size of that, and my son found it in our garden. And it's actually an iron concretion. We live in an area where we have lots of iron in the soil. And this incredible lump, like this perfect round ball. We thought at first that we'd found a meteor. And on reflection and studying it, it turns out that this is what iron does in seams in the ground. So there you go. Who knew? Who knew? And then, of course, we had landscape. So this is the landscape around me. I've put a series of four there. So the sunken lanes in Hampshire, the needles at the Isle of Wight. This is our great landmark, Butser Hill. And here, the South Downs. So we had a really, really fun week. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I finished off with skies. So here we go, lots of different skies from morning right through to night. So there's lots of different ways for us to enjoy our art, isn't there? Lots, lots and lots. And it's just a case of going out there and exploring. And given the current situation where we're sitting here at home, this is just fun, isn't it? It's fun. Now, how are we doing? We're just past seven, so I think what I'll do now is we'll turn the camera around. Are you happy with that? If you don't like that kind of movement, just look away for a little minute and I'm going to turn you over so that we can look at the, the um, drawing board and I don't want anybody to feel peculiar with that, all right? So just for a minute, you might want to just look away. Okay. So we're going round, 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 and I'm going to turn the camera around. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? I have to confess we've got a little bit of sunshine here in our... Now I've got Denise Allen's problem here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got to find the right thing to do up. So bear with me, bear with, bear with. As they said, what's... Oh, that's, um, what's the programme they do that with? What is that programme, everybody? Come on. Just trying to do this up so that you're not going to go all Do you know something? I'm having a Matthew night. This worked perfectly all right when I was... Hang on, hang on. I'm not giving in. Let me get my pliers, everybody. Let me get my pliers. That was perfectly all right earlier on. Of course it was. I need pliers. Let's see what we can do. Because otherwise you're going to land up looking out of the window, which isn't much fun, is it? Sorry, that's my hand. No, 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 no. Come on, play ball, play ball, play ball, play ball. Now then, hang on, everybody, hang on. You still all all right? Oh. Right, hold up. Because there's more than one way to... Uh... Credit it. Sorry, bear with, bear with everybody. My bits and pieces won't hold up. This is Denise's problem from last week, isn't it? Hang on. Right, hold on, we're going to have to try something else. My end's gone wobbly.
and I don't know why. Right, all right, everybody, it's all right. If that's what it wants to do, I shall get the easel out. So hold fire. Hold fire. Hang on. Now, this is the joy of working live. If it can go wrong, it will. Who was there yesterday for Matthew's thunderstorm? Wasn't that just something else? Poor man, my heart bled for him. You as well? What a to-do. Couldn't believe it. Okay, so here we have an easel. Here we have a painting. And then I'm going to bring you back a bit. So hold fire because you're going to move again. Okay. And I'm going to take you up a little bit. So stick with it, everyone. It's all right. We're going to get there, everyone. We're going to get there. This was all sorted out earlier on. And it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. And now, just to be difficult, it's playing me up. Here we go. So the joys of live TV. I'll tell you what, it never happens on Ho-Chanda. Now then, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is there a song there? Do you see what I see? <gasps> Look, we're getting there. I want to just tip it a little bit more like that, because if I don't, we're going to land up with paint all over the shop and you'll be wondering what the Dickens is going on. As if you aren't already. You're very patient, all of you. Thank you very much for bearing with me. <gasps> I think we're getting there. Can you see that, everybody? You're happy with that? And that means that you should be able... Will you stop it? You should be able, I should be able to zoom you in and out too, which might help. Could be quite good. Right. There we are. Let's try that and see where we go with it. Everybody, we're going to paint today snow flurries on the marshes. And... Realistically, this is going to be quite fun because we're going to use a scalpel and all sorts of wonderful, weird and wonderful things could be happening here and it's just a case of being brave and playing with the paint. So right, I'm moving you again, so sorry. Just moving you a little bit more. I want you to see everything. I don't just want you to see bits of... Oh, my goodness gracious me. So sorry, everybody. Have you got a headache? Oh, I think I've broken it. I've broken it. Everybody, I've broken it. What am I going to do now? Right, OK. Right, everyone. I'm going to say to you, hold fire, because now I've really, really got to think about something else because my end's fallen off. And when your end falls off, you know you're in trouble. So hold fire, close your eyes, make a cup of tea. That's it, my end's back on. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. I would really rather, though, that I could have that flat so that you can see it properly. Hold fire. Is anybody waiting for their dinner tonight? Because if you are, are you, are you waiting for your suppers? Hang on a minute, everyone. I'm going to abandon that and get something else that I can use here because I really am not prepared to do this in an unprofessional manner, come what may. I'm just not. So hold fire. I'm going to put the phone down. I'm going to give you something very uninteresting to look at. Talk to me whilst you're there. And I'm going to get my box of tricks and we'll sort this out. Because this absolutely 
will not do. Not in a million years will this do. I want you to see this demo and I want you to see it properly. And we've got the equipment we need. It's just a case of getting it right and sorting it out. And we will. Because we are consummate professionals, all of us, you and me together, we can do this. Now, I, let me talk to you about some of the things that you need to know over the next couple of days. We are going to um, put a poll up. And this is your homework. I want you to do a little bit of homework for us, if you don't mind, please. Um, we have a poll and we're going to be asking you what you would like for some of the next things that we're going to be doing. And it involves you simply just pressing a yes or a no or um, just ticking a box on, on the Facebook page. So that's all you need to do. So we'd be most, most grateful if you would please think about doing that for us. The other thing I want to tell you is that the SAA are being absolutely cool over all of this and they are offering us and you um, a good membership deal. If you would like to join the SAA, they're saying to you that you can join and in the coupon box, if you put Sharon, just put Sharon in there, they will offer you um, a, a rather good deal of £20 off your first um, order of goodies. So that again is well worth having. So that's the SAA if you fancy joining them. And we, I need to tell you that the next person up after me is going to be Ali. And that's Alison, Ali Seaboard. Yes, you all know Ali. And she will be with you tomorrow night at seven o'clock. And trust me, she won't be having all this aggro. Watch out, I'm moving you about again, so you're going to be feeling a bit giddy again for a minute. So just hold fire. That's the white paper. And we are going to get there, everybody, we are. Because I'm not having it. This is professionalism totally and utterly we will get there my darlings now are you all right are you still dizzy are you giddy are you okay oh my goodness i'm gonna turn you round it says rotate your phone no all right there you go and if i put you in that way that way oh my lovelies you are so good for bearing with this thank you so much Thank you so much. You are my friends and I am grateful to you. So, how are we doing? <gasps> we can actually see paper. This is a paper alert. We can see the paper. We can see the paper, yes. And if I put my palette there, you can even see the palette. <gasps> Blimey, what's happening here? A bit of, um, it's, is it working? Is everything okay? Yes, it certainly is. Jolly good. Now then, are you enjoying the show so far? <laughs> you poor devils. Oh dear, oh dear. I don't know. Now I just want to come on here. I wanted to say to you that whilst you are um, looking tonight, if you have questions, don't worry about my quest, my answers. Um, it's it's not a problem because the chaps who are watching me here tonight and helping me will be with you, and they can answer as we go. And if if there's anything there that you chaps who are watching me here tonight <laughs> and helping me, let's get rid of the sound. They will be able to answer questions. All right. And you can um, wait until afterwards, everybody, and I will come back to you. And indeed, I will answer your questions later, okay? So don't worry about it. We will get you answered, all right? So, everyone, how are we doing? 
how are we doing? We're live, I have you on the iPad, so that's really good too. I want to make sure I get the comments so that I can see what you're saying. Now, I'm going to quickly mop my brow and I'm going to bring you in a little bit. And I apologize incredibly for this tonight. This has just been appalling, hasn't it? There we are. So, can you see what I see? Brilliant. Are you ready? Because we're going to get stuck in. This is snow flurries on the marshes. And we're going to paint here a scene with snow and we're going to use some masking tape and masking fluid and create this lovely thing with salt. Goodness gracious me, 181 people who have watched me make an idiot of myself. Thank you very much for joining me. I really do appreciate that. I'm going to be using 140 pound Bockingford and the paper has been um, stuck down very well with wide wide gummed tape and I like that because it means that it this won't escape when I throw lots of water on it so this is this is brilliant and I want to use this kind of masking tape when I'm getting around to doing some highlights on the water later and the colors I'm using three colors simply simply three colors I'm using raw sienna and light red and I'm using French ultramarine and the reason for this I've chosen these colours specifically specifically because I know for a fact that those two don't like each other and those two will granulate and they will separate if we're very lucky. And this is why it's a really good thing to know what your colours get up to and what their personal habits are. I also know that when I use salt with those two, the salt will remove the red and it leaves the blue behind. So how brilliant is that? And because I know that, I can really use that to my benefit. So those three colours there. They're in the palette. And the first thing I want to do is lay in my sky. I'm going to completely and utterly cover that. I'm going to use lots of water. And obviously I've drawn it out. Just one hint and tip everybody. When you do your background and you're drawing your waterline, use a ruler. Because I have a terrible tendency when I draw, I, I draw upwards to the right hand side. I can't draw a straight line. So I find that if I use a ruler and I measure up, it does mean that I get a nice flat horizon. Everyone, water is flat and there's no two ways about it. Water is flat, so that horizon is going to be straight. And as far as I'm concerned at the moment, so is my island. And even although you've got curves and bays in that island, they would still be on that particular um, level you know you've got your they're going to be horizontal so make sure you're nice and flat the first thing I'm going to do here I want to take my masking fluid and a bar of soap and just a gash brush nothing very very spectacular and I want to wet my brush and I'm going to soap it and the reason for that is because the soap will be a good, good protection for the brush and the brush therefore won't be harmed by the masking fluid. And all I want to do is mask out the trunks of my trees. That's all I want to do just for now, mask that. And you could do lines like this that are a little bit broken because what we'll do here is put branches and trees, you know, foliage across it. So for now, I just want to introduce that up through here, break, break, there we go, and a few little branches. This is going to be our island, and you can, if you want to, just drop in a couple of highlights through there, that's all. Don't need any more than that. And if I rinse my brush and I wipe it on my cloth, you find hey ho, this is incredible, the soap has protected the brush, no harm is done. 
So I have a couple of little bits of um, light coming through across the paper. I apologise for that, but we're working here in lovely bright sunshine. And um, Sharon is showing you where to stick it. Excuse me, Matthew. I say I didn't expect to look up and hear that kind of comment. There you go. I wonder what I'm supposed to be showing you where to swap to stick where. Don't ask. Don't ask. Whilst that dries, the brushes I want to um, work with is, this is a goat's hair hake, it's 24 millimetres and it's nice and springy and bouncy. I don't like a brush that I use and I work and then when it comes away from the paper it's bent. So with something like this it springs and it bounces. The other brushes I want to use is a number eight, these are sable brushes from Rosemary, a number eight and this here is my number six and just a zero rigger brush. We're going to use that later for some little tiny branches. When I put my sky in, I need to be good and prepared. So I have here, this is table salt, just good old Tesco's cheap table salt. Um, other stores are available, ha ha. But have it ready because I want to put that in my sky and you have to put it in when your sky is wet. It's no good trying to do that later on um, when it's, it's dry because it will not work. Okay, um, I can't turn my volume up anymore. I'm, I'm as loud as I can go. I'm sorry, I, I can't do, I'll speak a little more loudly. Can other people hear me? Yes? McDonald's salt is best, Matthew says. McDonald's, they've only just opened again, haven't they? The queues down our way have been horrendous. We had to drive round it the other day. Okie dokie, everybody, we're ready to go. I'm speaking up a little bit, does that help? I hope it does. Sound is okay here, Matthew says. Okay. Three colours in the palette. This, this sky here, I want a lovely golden area in the middle. I, I need light there so the trees are going to be dark. They'll be dark, they have to be dark against the light. Let's put some water on and then we can go from there. I'm putting my water all the way across the paper down to my horizon line. That's, that's my starting point. And if you look sideways at your paper, you can see where you've been because if it's matte, if it looks matte, then you know that that's dry. So just through here. You'll find that with this kind of tape on your paper, the paper will dry more quickly around the corners and the edges. So just maybe a little bit extra there. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the paper now will drink the, the water and not the paint. I want to have a little bit of extra time, okay? If I take my blue and I pop it in there and I'm going to take a bit of my light red and put it in there too. This colour is fierce. I'm warning you everybody, light red is fierce. So please just be gentle, don't use too much. The first thing I'm going to do here, having mixed that little bit, is come in with my lovely warm golden raw sienna look at that gorgeous gorgeous color and this works very very well because it gives you the impression of a winter's day and the light that shines through the clouds when there's that bit of kind of sunshine that's only just skimming through the clouds it's also a very good colour to use on a cloudy sky because it gives the impression that the weather is coming in. If you've got one of those pictures where the snow is coming in and this is that bruised colour that works so well for that. Now here we have that colour that we mixed dark around the corners. Look at that. Look at that. So that's a start. Make it lighter as you come down to the horizon. I want some more blue in there. Don't be too fussy about mixing it. Mix some of it on the paper, that's fine. Let the paint do its own thing because these two really will. They sulk together 
and they really show off together so let them do it a little bit of the light red now throw it all see what I mean about how strong that is so here's my cloth and I just want to get rid of some of that on the cloth. And then we're going to think about how we bring it through into our picture. So I'd like a little bit of sky and cloud through there, something a bit darker. Some through here. This is very red, so come back again with the blue, with the blue colour, and pull some through here. These are nighttime clouds, you know, that time when the night time's coming in and the purple clouds come through. I'm going to clean my brush. And then I want to just come in with a little bit more blue. The paper's lovely and wet, so it means that I can work it and I can enjoy it. If you don't like these blobs on the end of the clouds, still a dirty brush. All right, I haven't cleaned the brush, but I've dried it. I've gotten rid of the wet. Just come in and pull it through and back. So you can do that too. And the reason why I don't clean it and come back and do that, look at that shaft of sunlight through there. Isn't that a shame we can't paint that? <laughs> That'd be lovely. I have my salt now and I want to just dribble a little. Please don't put too much on because too much takes too much colour out and before you know where you're at you find that um, you, you just have so much effect on your sky that it, it's not giving you um, anything really, it, it doesn't read as anything. Oh gosh look at that sunlight right through there, isn't that just incredible? I do need though to see if I can just pull the curtain, hold on, because I don't really want it and it's not going to work. I'm not going to get rid of it. Never mind. Never mind. We'll cope. We've coped with everything else, everybody, haven't we? We're just amazing, you and I together. Invincible, really. It's just astonishing. Astonishing. Okie dokie. I've had a bit of a splash down here. Not worried about that. You'll see why later, because we're going to do something with that. And um, it's fine. doesn't matter. Everybody, light red is horrendously, horrendously strong, okay? And from that point of view, bear in mind that the wretched stuff, if you get that on you, it will make a mess. So please just be careful. It, it's unforgiving and it won't come away. So just, just to say. The salt is starting to work. I can see that it's starting to work already. So that's very, very gratifying. Very happy with that. Next thing I need to do is just come down here and echo that golden light down into my water. This is going to be water, marshland, marshland. It's looking great, thank you Denise. I needed that. I shall have a strong, strong drink after this, I tell you. But I, I, it, nothing can be as bad as poor Matthew yesterday. I just could not credit the, the effort that went into that. How unfair was that? This is that gorgeous, gorgeous, lovely raw sienna again. And this is one of those colours that when you put it on the paper, it rushes. It just rushes to fill the gaps. It's a paint that blossoms. We put it in the water and it just goes it's wonderful. I need this lovely light here echoed. Water is the most peculiar thing. You will find with water that where something is dark, it reflects lighter. And where something is light, it will reflect darker. It is the most peculiar thing. So it's well worth taking note of that when you are painting yourselves and, and just, just clocking that because it's peculiar. I don't know why it is, it's something to do with refraction, but there you go. Somebody, if you know, please, can you tell me because I'd love to know. Hello, a bit late to the party, but it's fine. We're chuffed to bits that you're with us. I'm mixing up this dark grey because I just want to swipe some of that into the edges of the picture. And did you see how I did that? It's 
all you need to do. Because later on, can you see that down the bottom, everybody? Just lift that a bit. And you see what I mean about this being a rusher? Look at the way that has oozed up the paper. Look at that. And that is the paint. Now, if you're not sure about your paints, everybody, um, go and find me on YouTube. And I've just produced a short video. It's also on our Artist Demo Days page about knowing your watercolours. And this is all part of it, okay? Is knowing what your paints do when they do this. Wow, look what you can do with that if you know that it's going to do it. Okay, I need to leave this. It's got to dry. My salt's working well. I'm very happy with that. And you know I was saying I don't want it to be too, 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 too. Therefore, when you reach a stage that you think you're happy with it, if it's still wet like this and it's still all working, this is the time when you might think you might like to dry it, okay? I'm going to put the hairdryer on this because I don't really want my salt to do any more. That looks, at the moment, doesn't it, like frost or like snow. And I, if I allow it to go, these areas here will become bigger and larger and they'll just become big blobs. And I don't want it to do that. So therefore, everybody, I'm going to put the hairdryer on. So uh, at, like last time, if the cat's on your lap and is going to go for a runner, please can you just hold on to your kitty or put your hands over your pussy cat's ears? But I'm going to hair dry this just for a minute to stop it now. I don't want any more. Any questions while I do that? Are you all all right? Have you all suffered enough? It's working. Right, brilliant, 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 brilliant. The salt, I'm just going to brush that away because I don't want that to go into the other paint that I'm going to work with. It will affect how that works. So for me, something like this works really well. Just a little face makeup brush because it will get rid of the salt, move it out of the way, Try not to get it into your paint palette. That's really quite important because it will affect how the rest of your work goes on the paper. And we're ready for the next bit. I want to show you how I would paint these lines of trees that you may have seen in the original painting. It's not difficult to achieve a hard line of trees and to have that mist come down into the valley. It's just a technique, don't be afraid of it, and you can do it. I, I want to use both of my brushes here, and the first thing I'm going to do is just work out where I might want my tree line to be, and I think that to make life maybe a little easier for you, I might draw in where it is. If you are doing this at home, have a think about where you want to change an area. If you don't like how it looks, your trees might come just down here to hide this area. I don't like that, so I'm going to completely come through there and hide it. And this is all a blank area, so I'm actually going to bring this tree line up a little higher and bring it up through into here. Because if we're clever, everybody, you'll find that your 
snowflakes will shine through the paint and it will look as though they're still on top of the tree. So that's what we're aiming for. That's my goal. Let me start from this side here on the right because I find it easier to work from, <laughs> from the right into the left. I want to show you properly how to do it here. The first thing you're going to do is wet your paper. And this time you're not wetting it right up to that pencil line that I've drawn in. I want to come just maybe a millimetre, two millimetres lower than the pencil line. And I'll explain why in a second. Bring your, paper, your water in, so just a couple of millimetres below, and bring the water down. So that when I come in here, and I lift the paint and I'm going to mix blue and the brown, less of the brown because it will warm the colour and I want a cold colour because the further away something is, the colder and the bluer and the pur more purple it is. And I want to come in here and I want my brush just above the waterline. So just go above it so that the trees will be hard against the skyline, but they are going to be pale underneath. Now that, believe it or not, because we're so warm in here, has already dried out. Can you believe it? Look at that. It's all right, doesn't matter, we can cope. And what I want to do here, on this bit of my tree line here, is fade it out so that it's bleeding and bleaching into the sunshine. Just fade it out. And when you reach that stage, don't keep pulling, don't keep pulling. Come into it and push it back and you get the neat edge that way, okay? So that is how I do my tree line. If you don't like knobby and bumpy bits like that, just come in and fracture it a little more. Try not to get a pattern going. It's a terrible thing that when we paint like this, we have this horrible tendency to come along a line with hills and with trees like this, and we go da di da di da da di da di da da di da di da and you get this, this pattern. And nature isn't like that necessarily, not in this instance. I don't want a pattern. I want this to be really random, so that's where I'm going with it. On the other side, what I think I'll do this time actually, ladies and gents, is I'm going to use my, this brush here, my hake brush, because it carries more water and um, I think it will be less inclined to dry as quickly. So I'm going to come down here. And the reason why I bring the water right down is because that stops you from getting a watermark. Bring it down to a, a, a point where you can you've got a transition because otherwise it can watermark and that's a real nuisance. So same colour, load the brush, because I don't at this point want to be dipping in and out, and I'm going to come in above. Actually, let me use a smaller brush because this time I can show you some fir trees. Hold up, bear with, bear with. So if I come in here and I use a smaller brush and I'm more pointy about it, Just dig it up into the sky. And there you see, this is what I'm meaning about pattern, so get rid of it. Shunt it, get rid of it. I'm coming through here. And the same applies, rinse, come in underneath, and I'm going to pull it a bit. And then I want to rinse, and I'm, like Matthew yesterday, you rinse and you dab because that dab gets rid of all the extra water and this time I'm pulling it back through here. And then that gives me two quite interesting lines of trees. Blending and bleaching out into the sunshine, but you've got them also bleeding down into the valley so that you lose, you get this mist. The paper I'm using, I'm, I'm using, um, 140 pounds Bockingford and I like that because it's um, not horrendously absorbent and it means that my paper 
will not suck it all in and leave me with um, just paint and no water. I want water there so that I can move it all about. And yes, indeed, Ali, it is. It's on the resources list. So do have a look and see what you can use there and how I'm working, all right? Now then, not £140, you numpty. It's £140 in weight. Okay. Now, I'm talking to Matthew here, everybody, on the, on the um, feed. I need to dry that so that I can come in and we're going to add another tree line in a second. So bear with me and I'm just going to dry that. It won't take long. There we are. The paper hasn't been stretched and you may have noticed that the first wash that I did we had a little bit of a cockle going on there. That's all right. As long as I use the hairdryer or I put it aside it will, it certainly will dry again flat. So that is perfect. Matthew's got the same hairdryer as me. Well, 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 great minds think alike. How about that? Next thing I need to do, everybody, is bring in my next line of trees. And this time, shall we have a little go at changing it and putting some different colours in there? Because that could be quite interesting. Therefore, have them all ready and waiting in your palette. I need to have a mixture of a more red tone this time. I don't want it to be as cold as the previous batch. Now I know I have the blue and I have the red and I'm going to use a bit of everything. And what we'll do is we'll bring the trees down to our water side. The forest's coming right down to the water side. Okay, start over here this time. Same applies, bring your brush through. So I want to leave a bit of mist. I'm going to bring the brush through, pull it down, down towards the island. Bring it through here, wet that whole area so that we can manipulate it and, and abuse it and use it. And then this time, everybody, what happens if I have a bit of blue on my brush and I'm using a smaller brush, turning it over and then I'm going to add some of this grey brown. So I've got both colours on my brush and I'm coming up into that area, twisting and turning. No, I haven't got enough brown there, I want some more. So you can see what I'm doing on the palette. Twisting and turning. And just spike those. Oh, look, seed pattern. No, gone. Don't want it. It's not, I'm not having it. So up, move. A bit more blue because we're, we're now too, too brown there. Don't want that. And again, I want to fade out as I come down into this area here. Bit, bit of brown in there, that's too, too blue. There we are. And using the larger brush, if you want to, just come in underneath and a bit of water to encourage that to run. And I need to just pull that through down behind the island. That's okay. And what we're going to do now, I just want to move that because I know that will cauliflower. I don't want it to at the moment. I'm watching my paper because what I want to do is come in here and put some additions in there now. We're going to bring some trees in that are going to be a little bit closer. So some through here. And again, I'm double brushing here, so I'll come in and just tweak and twiddle that like this. And all of these little blurry marks are lovely because they give the impression of more trees, more, more of the canopy, and they're in the mist, they're hiding. So that's totally cool, it's just what I want. So through here, we're going to throw a little bit more brown in down there just to echo the colour higher up because as it comes closer to us of course you're getting more definition more colour so that's good as well 
And what I want to do here is get hold of this and just pull and drag it along and then that will become my waterline. So just do a bit of that to make this more interesting here. And that's too brown, so just a little bit of blue in there as well. Drop it in as you please. But I want that waterline clean brush. Get dab dab on the cloth and across. I want that nice clean edge. Don't worry if it goes in the water because we're going to be doing all sorts of things with that in a minute. So do not worry, I'm going to give you kittens over the water, trust me. Oh, I can't wait. On this side, same applies. We're going to play with this in the same fashion. So something from high up here, coming down on a steep gradient there maybe. And again, I just want to infill that so that I can play with it in a minute. And I'm going to clean this brush, dab, dab, come in, bit of brown, turn it over, bit of blue. And then what happens if we come in with those two colours on our brush, and I'm rolling the brush as I work. I don't know if you can see my hand, but I'm rolling as I work. A bit more blue, because again we're, we're all a bit of something or everything and a bit of nothing, so I just want a bit of the blue and a bit of that and a bit of mucky palette and a bit of brown it's a bit of a higher tree there and a bit of blue in there as well because that's all a bit too 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 and then rinse dab dab come in and I'll come through and I'm just going to soften that line of trees bring some of the color down move it around I hope everybody can hear me all right now. I'm trying to speak as loudly as I can for everyone. Okay. Yes, Keswick, absolutely. I I love Cumbria. Um, travel up there often, and um, I just love the scenery, and it inspires so much in us, doesn't it? Just love it, love it, love it, love it. You look at, you go up there and you know it's doing your soul good because you get out of the car and you look at the scenery and I think to myself, do the people who live up there really appreciate what they've got? I hope they do because it's exquisite. And I mean, I'm lucky here where I am. I'm right on the edge of the South Downs, so the scenery here is extraordinary as well. But my goodness, we have some beautiful places in this country, don't we? Aren't we lucky? Canada. I've never been or I'd love to go to Canada. Oh, I'd so love to go to Canada. Love to. Okie dokie. So same applies. Get hold of it and drag it along the waterline. Kicking and screaming if that's what it takes. It's all right. It doesn't matter. You're going to do it and you are in charge. You're in charge of this watercolour. So you show it who's boss. All right. First time I've watched a demo, really enjoying it. Oh, I'm so glad. That's lovely. I hope it's making sense. This is the important thing. Now, I think the next thing I'm going to do, because I really, really, really want this area to be nice and dry. And that's quite important to me um, to make sure that it's dry. Therefore, I think my next move might be to put in some of these trees. I want this to be a big denouement later on, okay? So using our two brushes, either one, it doesn't matter. I'll bring this back so that you can see the colors I'm going to use. We want to drop in, so I think these are going to be fir trees. I really think they're going to be fir trees. And what I want to do here is take my golden brown and I'm just going to make that a little bit darker in there because that's going to be the light shining through the trees. I'm going to work into it. And for this particular um, episode, just take one tree at a time and I'm going to double load, triple load. I'm going to use all sorts of gunk on the brush, just a mixture of those three colours. And I want to make sure that I put dark into light. And you have to do that, everybody, please. This is the law, all right? 
you must think about your tonal values. So into the light areas, we need to put dark colours. And as it happens with this, I think that's going to be the case with most of it, realistically, because I don't have any dark hillside that I've taken behind it. So it's okay, we're going to get going. So with a mixture of all these colours, and I'm using my paint quite thickly at the moment. So on skirting around the edges, use your paint emulsion thickness. Imagine you're painting at home and you're doing the walls and this is the colours, the thickness, texture that you'd use. So down here we need some real, real dark, don't we? So use the blue and add the brown and mix it till it's really thick and gloopy so that you can come in and you can put that colour in. All right. It's too, I'm almost using it neat from the palette, to be honest. But I'm not going to get away with that up here because I want some nice, fine little, little branches. So a bit of water, dirty brush, but now it's water that's thinning the paint. These fir trees tend to be a little bit spiky up top, don't they? And I think, why don't we have just a little bit of a breeze going so we can move our tree so that it looks as though it's just having a bit of a blow. So you can do that if you want to. Give it a bit of a bend, so that's okay. And then in the middle here, I want to lighten my colours and I'm going to do that with water because I want these to be a little bit thinner so that we get that gold showing through. More water, so dirty brush, put water on the brush so that it looks as though the light's shining through those trees in the middle there, just like this. So just keep on flicking side to side, little darting movements. It's going to be darker as it comes down the tree because here you've got the main kind of um, tree canopy, it's the, the tree, all the branches in the shadow. So I want to be a bit darker down here. But try and keep some of this gold in here. Some of the branches would be dark. But I like this lovely light movement in here. Some of it you can blur. So if we take a wet brush and just come in and scumble it so that in there it looks as though the light again has bleached out the, um, the branches. So that's cool. And then I want to start coming back through here, pull some over the top. And then I'm coming back in here. A bit more definition. Pull, pull this across here as well so that we've got movement. And where that comes out into the sky with water, thin colour, I want that to be pale out there because this is where it's bleached by that bit of light. delicacy just on the edge of the brush using the tip. It's all just been bleached out by a bit of light shining through the tree and now I want to come darker as I come down the other side of this, this tree here. We need to be a bit dark around here where we've got the branches and the trunk because if we're not it's not going to show. Light against light is nonsense, it doesn't read at all. So we want that to be dark as you come through. Leave a gap here and there so that the light can shine through there too. And then up through here, little thin bits and pieces. I don't know whether these are aspens or um, just fir trees. Depends on where you might want to be. So I suppose if we're in Canada, we could be aspeny, can't we? But um, if we're in Cumbria, Although that's not quite true, actually. We do have aspens in this country. I was quite surprised to be in Orkney last year and up in Shetland and to, to not realise what I was looking at. And um, I looked a tree up in a book as I was there kneeling down in the grass and it was an aspen. And I've blown me down. I didn't know that we had aspens in this country. I thought that they were um, entirely an American or Canadian species. So that taught me a lesson.
You're never too old to learn, are you? So, are you still all there? Are you all all right, everybody? Everybody all right? I'm not going to mess about with that because I quite like that hillside, so therefore this area here needs something. So we're going to pull some of that down into there. So you see that makes that interesting now to look at. And this is just what we want to do. We want it to be interesting. This, I'd like to drape something through here, so come through and pull a branch through. That's it. And again, that, that gives the impression that it's all being blown out this way. And so we could do a little bit more of this. It just gives it, you know, it's a, it's a scrawl that's coming through. I tell you what, in this light area here, water on the brush, so I've got thin, thin paint. If you come through, and a bit of a dab on my cloth, and I come through there with light, light paint, and I can still see the snowflakes through it and under it. But again, it makes it more delicate. Now, funnily enough, this is starting to look like a broadleaf tree because I've, I've fluffed it up and filled it up. So that, that's a thing to bear in mind. And what I want to do in here with the blue is just add a couple of darker areas so that it's not just a, a, an amorphous blob there. So there you go. All right, so we'll leave that alone for a minute. What we're going to do now is take a, take a breath, just take a breath, look at what you've done, think about it, understand where it's going. Is it balanced? Does it look all right? We can still see the snowflakes through this mountainside, so that's, that's great. We've got all the colours in there. The colours are in here, so that's fine too. And I'm going to just lay in my island. I want to just smack in some colour. You get all the technical terms with me. I'm going to smack in some colour. How about that? Now, it's looking better now because the sun's off the paper, so that helps, doesn't it? It's beautiful in here in the afternoon, but of course, for something like this, you're, you're landing up with the reflections. Through here, I want to just pop in some colour to give the impression of my island. And... I wet it first again because it gives me time to talk to you and it gives me time to think. If I take some of this red and pop it into this bluey mix here, two red, such a strong colour, it's fierce. Blue. And let's try a little bit of that too. Ooh, yeah, mucky palette, look at that. So I'm going to take that quite thinly to start with and I want to pull it across my island like that. Nice decent edge like yay and through here like that. I want to just lift, now wet brush, you go there for a minute, wet brush, thirsty brush and I'm going to just do that. Not too much, but it gives me a lighter area on my island, but with the darker edges that I need. But I, I do need them to be just a little darker than that. So coming back into this kind of gray color here, just want to make the ends darker. That's got to be dark against the light dark against the light. It's the law. It has to be. Light against dark, dark against light. So just go for that. Okay. And then down on the base of the island, that would also be dark because of course the island bulges out towards us and then goes down into the water. So I would just come through there and I would make that dark. The only other thing that I might consider doing is coming through here and introducing just a little bit of a blob there and a stone there where, where perhaps our island has broken up and we land up with these. And what do we do with the bottom of all of that? Because at the moment it's just sitting there, isn't it? What you're going to do is come through and just 
get hold of the bottom of that with a damp brush and just ground it like that. All you need to do, damp brush, and it just settles it. We can do that with this as well if we want to, just gently, gently come through and soften. So it's just damp, I cleaned it, and then if I come to this end, all I've got to do is maybe that, and it gives us that softer edge on the bottom of our island, okay? Right, now then. The next part is pretty scary, I have to confess. It won't take us long to do, so if you're waiting for your tea, don't, don't worry. But I need to just make sure that this is utterly, completely and totally bone dry. If it isn't, I can hurt the paper. And I, I really need to be precious about this. We're going to just blow dry for another little minute, right? You know, I said at the very beginning that the salt will take out the red paint and leave the blue. Look! Look! Was there ever a truer word? Look at this. It has literally removed the red paint and left behind the blue. Now, we have um, a website coming your way, everybody. And when it arrives, I'm going to blog that and I will give you some examples of other pictures, all right, so that you can have a look and see. But for now, we're going to do this. Right, now, this is seriously scary. Are you ready for this? When you're painting like this, everybody, can you please be very, very aware that watercolour is an absolute toad because it will always dry up up to a third lighter than you see it when you put it down. So if it looks right when it's wet, it's wrong and that's really, really important. We're going to use masking tape. And I want to use this in my foreground. I'm going to come in through the picture, probably with two or three stripes. And it's really, really important that when you use this stuff, it will stick to your paper like what's it to the proverbial. So please, please, when you tear your piece of mask, many people have lots of different ways of doing this. You can rub your hands along it, but I'm going to actually put it on my cloth like that. So one, and I'm going to use two pieces, like this. Oh, that's, that's quite smelly, that tape. Isn't that strange? Must be the glue on it. How many have I got room for? Let's go for two. Make sure it really isn't too sticky. I don't want it tearing the paper, so I'm going to do that again even. And again. I'm not concerned about anything going underneath my tape, and you'll see why in a second, and I'll explain. I want to take this, and I'm going to pop it underneath my island, up to the bottom of the island, and I want to pop it along and through. And if you're doing this at home, it's a good idea to just have a little bit of an overflow on either edge of your picture. And this is going to snug right up underneath like this. I don't really want a gap there because you'll get a, a line straight across your picture and I don't, I don't want that. There you go. So that's perfect for me because it leaves me with dark here, which is grand, just what I well, just what the doctor ordered really and I've got my bit of light along here and yet I can play with all of this now and scary scary everybody I am now going to use this little blighter my scalpel and we are going to cut areas out of the masking tape 
which is going to create areas of shadow on the water. And this is all down to pressure. So if this is you at home, will you please have a little play first? <laughs> because there's nothing worse than cutting right through your picture. It's not the end of the world because you can always go in on the back and you can put a bit of stick some sellotape onto the back. And I've done that with students before. It is serious, Linda. This is it, okay? Um, it's not a special masking tape, no. I'll tell you what we have discovered though Two Weetabix, yes. What I have discovered is if you use green frog tape, you know, that you see builders use, it's too thick, you can't cut through it with any great ease, and you do land up cutting the paper. And what I'm going to do is cut triangle shapes, thin slivers, from the middle of my picture through right out to the edge, and go right beyond and past you at the end of your masking tape. So let me just show you where I'm going with this. It's pressure and it's practice, and you get to know how much you can put down. So I'm coming through here, and I'm scoring it right through past. Go right to the tip of where you, you came away, and score and go through again. Right, I'm going to do another one through here. So this time, I'm going to come from this side of my paper through and in, and then from the paper again, through slither 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 in and then I think I'd like to do a small one through here. The trouble arrives with this technique when you've got a new, pea, a new blade in your knife and you don't realise how sharp it is and it can go a bit peat tong so you've just got to watch that. And then through here, oh that's my nail varnish gone. <laughs> end up cutting yourself. I just need to get to the end of that. Right, let's see what we've done. So we get hold of it and we pull. That's torn but it doesn't matter because I can come back and pick that up. Like that. What we're going to do effectively is create negative spaces on the water, the shadows that are on the water, and it, oh, it gives you some lovely effects. Trust me, it's worth the effort and it's worth the fear. If your paper tears, please, please don't worry because believe it or not, it does actually just add to the enjoyment of the picture. See, it's torn there, but when the paint, next layer of paint goes on, it goes into the torn piece differently, and it actually gives you a completely different texture, and I quite like it, it's different. There you go. So use the end of your scalpel to pull out. There you go. Ooh, I want another one in here. I just want to do it, because I do. Okay, so in here, I'm going to, I don't want to affect too much of this lovely blue, but I'm going to just, and I do find that one of these pointed scalpels is better for this because it gives you that nice dig. You can get that end right in there. Okay, are you ready? We've done that. So now, everybody, what we're going to do is be brave and fearless. I'm going to mix up a real dark, all right? Real, real dark here. So lots of blue into here. Thick paint everybody, don't be scared of it, lots of paint. I, I would struggle to do this if I was doing it with pans, I have to say. So there you go, and this colour, I'm going to be brutal, and I'm going to run it right across all of this area through here. So through. All right, are you with me? Don't be frightened, it's okay. Sharon knows what she's doing, it's fine. More paint, pull it through, pull it through all those areas where you have the gaps. Now I have to say to you, I quite like this blue down the bottom, so all I'm going to do there is rinse my brush. I'm going to wet that middle area to keep it clean and to keep it safe, and then I'm going to run the dark into it like that. All right, 
So don't be afraid. If you land up with pointy bits or blobs on the ends, don't pull them out. Come in from the clean area and pull them back. All right, so clean your brush, get rid of the fluid and pull it back. And you'll find that that works a lot better for you. Right, final leg, final, final leg now. That needs to dry. So did you notice how dark that is? Don't be afraid of it. Don't be frightened. I'm coming in and I'm going to just dry that like this. So don't be afraid of the dark. Okay. Now seriously, if you are at home and you are painting this yourself tomorrow or later on, it would be a very good idea if you were to paint your water and to go away and leave it overnight to really, really dry. Even stand this on a radiator or your boiler let it really really dry and the same with this here this where i just cursorily passed that hair dryer over it if it was you at home i would keep going with the hair dryer because eventually this starts to lift you know the hair dryer lifts masking tape doesn't it so that would make life easier for you and i'm going to get hold of this now please will you cross your fingers because we don't want too much of the paper to tear i'm going to do that it's sticking to me. Again, I might use the scalpel just to get hold of the um, edges. There we go. So pull it, get rid of it. Get rid of it, pull it. Bit by bit. And can you see this beautiful light that this sheds on the water? I love it. I, lo I just love it. I just think it gives you this absolutely incredible hard shiny brilliant bright light i love it and you can tweak this as much or as little as you want to this here where it's torn oh so what big deal come on we can deal with this grab some paint and i would if it was me just come in there and introduce something like that the end here where it's wet dab and just blend away all right and I think personally if this were me to get some good contrast here I would wet along that edge like that and then I would take my browny bluey gungy ooey uggy color and I would just gently gently do that so that I give myself a horizon and again, I've rinsed, dabbed, and I'm going to come in and just do that. And you wet underneath so that you don't get a hard line. Don't wet the line itself, just come in underneath. And then when you gently, gently, gently run that line through there, it bleeds into the water. Rinse, dab, and just do that. And the only finishing sort of touches I would give to this if it was me, this is where you need your rigger brush. So wet your rigger brush and take some of your darks. Fill the whole brush. A rigger brush is a reservoir. So you've got to put the whole brush in the paint and then just draw it out to get rid of the drips. And now with this, a couple of things. I would come into my trees and I might just be interested in pulling some branches out. Purely and simply because it makes it more interesting. You get these branches, don't you, at the tips of trees. And again, I'm pulling them all this way. Like this. 
so just a few little branches. In the, in the dead spots like this, where they really, really would stand out and show. And I would use my rigger brush, and I'm going to use this in a kind of cutting motion now to come into my island. And it, oh, there's the phone, somebody wants me. I'm busy! So just pull a few rocks and boulders through the cross like this. It's funny, we both got meetings tonight. My husband's on the other phone, um, on the other computer, having a parish council meeting. So the two of us together, both, both busy. So no one's going to answer the phone tonight, are they? There you go. So that gives you a bit of texture on your island. And I'm just using that brush like this. And marshland. And why I'm saying to you it doesn't matter where this has been damaged, I couldn't worry about that at all because what I'm going to do is use my rigger brush and I'm going to turn all of that into a feature because I'm coming into those areas and I'm going to just introduce equal tiny bits and pieces of grasses. They get larger as they come towards you, of course, because you know this, is, this gives you your perspective. But just introduce a few little bits and pieces of grasses to, to give you that. I want you to feel like you can walk through that. It's not so, so deep that we can't use it and go exploring. So little grasses. And for these, I'm using the tip of the brush. I'm going right in there with 90 degrees to the paper just to pull it through. I was talking about this to somebody yesterday on, on Facebook and on the internet and I said please watch so that I can show you how I use the rigger brush. And there we go, we're going to just come in with the tip of the brush to give you that bit of, um, you know, interest here. And this is how you stop stressing over where the paper has torn. It does not matter. Everything that you have on your painting is that if it's an accident, it's an opportunity you haven't used yet. So make the most of it. Ground it perhaps by just rubbing your finger underneath. I want to remove the masking fluid so that you can see where we go with that. Make sure that's dry. Now, Matthew Palmer will tell you that this, this is your masking removal tool. Rubbish, this is, look. This, oh, it's wonderful. It's your mask away and it's just like crepe sole of a shoe really. And all you need to do with that is come in here and rub the masking fluid away. And that will give you these lovely bright tree trunks. I have to say, they really are a bit bright. So don't stress it, damp brush. So here we go, damp brush. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to soften. Just some areas down here at the base of the trunk. Pull the colour, just pull it through. That's it. Ground them into, into the island. Some of this is too bright, so again, soften, soften. And as long as you don't twiddle and fiddle it and you're not scrubbing away, you'll find that you won't hurt the paint too much and it won't be a mess. So I've done that. And then all I want to be doing with that is picking up a little bit of paint and in some areas blotting some of that out. Just, just dumb it down. You don't want to look at that and suddenly think, whoa, that's really in my face, I need sunglasses. So let's have rid of some of it. And look where that takes you. Suddenly you've got these lovely called ghost pines aren't they? Monterey, we visited Monterey last year and the pines there are white, they're bleached by the sea. And they're called ghost pines because they're really really very white. So maybe that's what we've painted, I don't know. Now finally this is up to you, if you want to you can come into that sky and you can use your rigger brush and you can introduce just a few little birds. So that's up to you. Different angles, they're all coming in at different angles. So a little flock of crows or something through here might be quite interesting. Mine always look like bats. 
There you go. So that gives you a bit of interest up there. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't do too much more to that. You could do a bit of flicking around this edge if you wanted to. But I love this technique. It just gives you that bright, bright, lovely look to the water. And I find it quite exciting. It's contrast, isn't it? We can see here where it's granulated beautifully, which is perfect. And the, the way the salts worked in it to give you this idea of frost and snow. And put it all together and it comes up with some interesting effects. If you're going to have a go at home, we would love, love, love to see what you can do. Please, please post it up to our page. We'd love to see it. And um, don't forget tomorrow you've got our Ali. She's going to be um, busy away there painting her Jack Russell, one of her little doglets. And the rest, the whole of the rest of the week, you have us to come and watch and to enjoy the painting. So in the meantime, don't forget the SAA. Don't forget the poll that you can take part in. And we'd like to know from you whether you want us to do evenings or carry on with weekends so that you can tell us what you want. But everybody, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I apologise most profusely about the beginning of this. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I don't know why it all went terribly wrong for you, but I hope you'll forgive me for that. I'm very sorry. And I will go through all of your comments later um, or tomorrow and I will answer all your questions. So please don't worry. Any, any questions you have, we will answer them. All of us will. You will not be forgotten. So bless you all. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been lovely to be with you. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you again soon somewhere along Artist Demo Days. Bless you all. Night, night.